Welcome back to Tools and Track. In our previous episode, I was struggling with paint for brakes, and to be quite honest, this project has started to take its toll on me. So in this episode, it's time to get my mojo back. What do I mean by getting my mojo back? Well, this has been a slog putting this car back together. Tearing stuff down is an absolute doddle. You just take stuff off, chuck it in the bin if you don't want to keep it, and put it in the to-do pile if you do. Putting it back together, especially with a nice, fresh powder-coated chassis that I don't want to break, is a long, laborious and time-consuming process. So what we need to do here is find some landmarks. What's the first thing we're going to have to do in that list? Fix these bloody brakes. That's much better. That's a mojo boost. Those brakes look much better. Also, the car's getting very close. We're just about to land it in its wheels, but there's another thing we're gonna to have to address. It's time for us to deal with drive shafts. Now, one of the things I did when I was trying to address the clock was a suspicious looking CV joint got taken off and replaced. So I've got three that are old, as I said in an earlier episode, which you can find here. So we now need to replace the other three. Now, as I've skipped all of the process of doing the first one, let's show you what's involved with taking off. CV joint from a dry shaft and putting a new one on. Once you got the circle out. Effortless. I want to show you the other two that didn't come off and I'm going to buy a new shaft, but people. Oh, this is only one so. Indeed. Needless to say, that was a very different experience to the removal of the other, or well, the failed removal of the other CV joint. Indeed. So. I'm pleased to say this, though, isn't it? Ah, it does. That's a world away from what happened to the other one. So now we're putting the new one on. It's time for us to grease this. So in our previous episode, we greased up the rear bearings and put them in with normal, everyday commoner garden grease. Because this has a CV joint, it will need CV grease. So, what's the difference? Well, I could go into all the science of this and it would be very long and very convoluted. You put normal grease in something that spins fast, you put CV grease in something that takes dumps. So CVs, if you look at them, don't actually spin. This entire assembly rotates at once. However, there's a lot of shock loading between this, so you need a compound called molybdenum. That is what makes this stuff look black. It's basically graphite, but it will resist getting moved away, whereas normal grease will resist getting spun up. We're gonna to have to grease these thoroughly inside and out. Similar process, sticky fingers, let's get into it. Greasing things and sticky finger, fingers, I'm in. This sounds like a perfect Friday night. Cleanliness as ever mm -hmm. is key with this. Bath and WD-53, this should hopefully pop on with a little to no drama. <laughs> Actually specifically putting rubber on your pole. <laughs> <laughs> I've no more f to give. He might voice over this bit. I've no more f I've no more f And my vocal range doesn't go high enough. Now, when you're reattaching your dry shafts to the car, depending on what stage of the build you're on, you're going to have a number of options on how to do it. For me, because I've got these output flanges off, it's a lot easier to bolt these up to the shaft while it's off the car. Don't forget, this part will be hidden by the hub carrier once it's all in place. So, why make life hard for yourself? Is that going in, in situ? No. 
If that doesn't look like that's happening, I take it the arms are coming off. Aye. Aye. I figured that before we started, if I'm honest. I think we, I think we both knew that before we started, really. It was like, mind that time with the exhaust manifold. Shut up, shut up, okay. To get these onto the car, we're going to have to break the top wishbone arm off just to allow us the access to slide it in. And you thought I was done with these bolts? No! I love this toy. I don't think sent me away. This big machine gun mother that's given us so much trouble when we're taking the body off is now going to need to be upgraded. So, looks a bit tatty. First thing we're going to do is paint it. Then we're going to wrap it. Because we've poly bushed the car, they don't quite have the same temperature resistant properties that original metal elastic bushes had. With the front wishbone bushes being so close to this, they're likely going to melt. So some of this will have to be wrapped, but not all of it. Confused? Don't worry. Confused face delete, bro. There we go. One freshly painted exhaust manifold. Now, we are going to wrap this and there's actually a very useful video made by the Skid Factory, my fellow friends down under. They highlighted something I didn't actually know, which is you wrap wet. So let's try that. Here is my roll of exhaust wrap. Still, still dripping. So uh, we're gonna throw this on and see what happens. Right, now comes the fun part. Because I can't wrap right around the face of the manifold, I need to measure out some of this and start feeding it through. Obviously, I don't want to feed through the entire roll, so I'm just going to very basically wrap all this, which will be a larger diameter than what I'm going to need to finish it, and then just chop it off and feed it through. Doesn't look half bad. Once you've got it all on, it's worthwhile fitting the guy to make sure it all works. Now, with this lined up, you'll see my problem. That's why we need to wrap that. For it is a touch on the closed side. But yeah, that actually looks pretty trick. So that's the header's done and the brake's done. We probably could land this thing on the deck right now. However, I have three more things I need to do before we're ready for a body. One, we need to sort out the threads that are already covered in powder coat on the chassis. So that's going to involve some tapping. And to be honest, it's not very interesting. So it looks like this and we can blether over it. And now we're back. That was uh, the weakest montage known to man. Second thing is we will need to look at painting the anti-roll bars. The front one is too big to go on the body. So as I'm talking and describing what I'm going to do, there's a montage on screen, which makes it look very interesting. And now we're back. <laughs> okay, the last thing though, how do we think post strip down list making? And I've noticed that the handbrake cable wasn't actually in a decent enough condition for me to reuse. So I've binned it. And as you can see, what we were putting the brakes on in the back, there's a new cable going on. So because I've lost all the, uh, pick up points for where that cable uh, used to go through the chassis and also because it's a new cable and hasn't stretched we're going to have to adjust it now it can get adjusted on the car but it can get adjusted far easier with the body off okay I'll leave it here two bolts obviously these are two new bolts because I appear to have lost the old ones assembly here that goes through there with a split pin so I've just loosely popped that in these two lines are running to above the diff this one here is non-adjustable it just presses in to that wee thing and comes down here through a wee grommet, cable tied and clipped in. The other side is where the adjustment is. So take this wee lock nut away and you've got a little adjuster here. Infinite amount of adjustment. So it's about the halfway mark and it's actually lined up pretty tight. So we're just going to get this kind of as tight as it Wants to go, you'll see that starting to pull a bit taut. And we'll pop it in this wee hole. Let's see what that does for us. I mean, it's not bad, but I'm pretty sure we can get that tighter before we lock it off. So we'll tighten it up to three clicks. And that should hopefully 
give us a bit of lead room for a stretch. Oh, lovely. That's a wrap. So, just take it outside, cleaned it, gave it a look over, seems good. Next up, we're gonna have to sort the body. Not necessarily putting it onto the car, I'm afraid. Just sort it. Tune in next week and you'll find out what we mean. Thanks for watching though. Hit subscribe here, hit the next episode right about here. Thanks guys, see you later. Five, four, three, no, we were live two seconds ago.